This is gonna be a long one and it's gonna be about the English Civil War, so strap in. Let's contextualize. It's the 1600s in England and England is doing great. They have surpassed France as the dominant powerhouse in Europe. They're making a ton of money off of their new world colonies. And Elizabeth I ushers in this relatively peaceful reign for a long time. But then in 1603, she dies. Elizabeth should be known for a great many things, but she's most famously known for the fact that she died this virgin queen without an heir. So who becomes the next monarch to rule over England? It is her cousin, Mary Queen of Scots' son, James VI of Scotland. He is invited to rule. This ushers in the Stuart family tree in England, and he rules as James I. James I comes in and wants to rule as an absolute monarch, but England has this thing called the Parliament, which has existed since 1215 in the Magna Carta. Parliament also has this thing, according to the Magna Carta, called the power of the purse, which means that the monarch has to go through Parliament to raise any kind of money. James doesn't want to do that. He wants to raise taxes on his own without parliamentary consent. James, like Elizabeth, is ruling as a Protestant, and a lot of Catholics are upset with his rule and the fact that he's trying to raise taxes without Parliament's consent. This leads to the gunpowder plot in 1605, in which Catholics try to blow up Parliament when James is there, but then this also results in the fact that James has banned the ability for Catholics to vote in England. We must move on. James dies and his son Charles comes into power. Oh, Charles. Charles I, like his dad, wants to rule absolutely. Charles I, like his dad, also raises taxes without Parliament's consent through an old medieval tax actually called ship money. And then he and Parliament try to work stuff out, but then they don't work stuff out. And then he tries to dissolve Parliament a bunch of times, then Parliament's really angry with him. And all of this accumulates in the English Civil War. Because Parliament is like, Charles I, please stop doing that. And Charles is like, I'm going to do it anyway. Charles heads north and amasses an army, and then two factions divide in England. We have the Royalists, who are supported by the House of Lords, who support Charles' monarchy. And then we have the Parliamentarians, who are made up of the House of Commons, and they support Parliament. Charles I is captured and Oliver Cromwell rules in the interregnum. Cromwell is a strict Puritan, like a real strict Puritan, and puts some pretty harsh laws in England. Also, he desires to consolidate his power, so he like fills Parliament with people loyal to him and then calls for a vote of what they should do with Charles I, and then they vote on regicide, which is the death of a king. Charles I is beheaded for treason, and Oliver Cromwell continues his rule. And Oliver Cromwell does not treat people in Ireland, people in Scotland, or Catholics well at all during his time as Lord Protector for life in England. Cromwell dies, his son rules for a minute, but then Charles II, son of Charles I, is asked to come back and rule. Don't have enough time, so go to part two.